TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. Good afternoon. This is TNCRadio.live, and this is the Truckers Network Radio Show with your host, Shelly Johnson. Good afternoon. Welcome to TNC Radio Dot Live. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show, and now here's your host, Shelley Johnson. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Yes, this is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio Dot Live, where we offer the entertainment, sports, weather, traffic, and news that commercial drivers want to hear. About 264 million people in the world are affected by some sort of depression. Many have an anxiety disorder, according to studies. As 2020 came and went, a lot more people began to suffer from anxiety and depression with happiness, something that seemed to be something they couldn't achieve. So I thought today we would talk with Ed McCormick, who recently wrote a book called Happiness Power, How to Unleash Your Power and Live a More Joyful Life. This is in the third of the series of his power books, He writes under the pen name of Robert Gill Jr. Ed is an expert on the latest academic studies of happiness, its benefits, and how to improve it. Despite having one of the highest standards of living in the world, uh, the level of happiness among Americans is at its lowest, according to Ed. Americans are unhappier than they've been in years, according to the 2021 World Happiness Report. Ed, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I'm really looking forward to some of your insight here about how we can all be happy. We, we could all use some of that. Well, thank you, uh, Shelley. It's great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I was wondering if we could start maybe with a little bit of your background and what motivated you to research and write the book on happiness. Of course. Uh, I have uh, been a, a consultant for many, many years to uh, major companies for writing uh, uh, various types of business plans for them which required a lot of research. Uh, and about a year and a half ago, about a few months before the, uh, the, the COVID struck, I was reading the World Happiness Report uh, of 2020, and it indicated that the happiness levels in the U.S. Uh, were the lowest in 20 years. And that kind of shocked me. I'm a pretty optimistic fellow, and I thought to myself, well, why would that be? Uh, As I said, COVID hadn't hit yet. And I said, well, let me uh, put that in a book because I think that's an important important topic for those that uh, would like to see how and why to be happy. Uh, So that's what started me off. And I began looking at the various research on happiness. And to my surprise, there were hundreds of studies about happiness throughout the years. Actually, it goes all the way back to Aristotle, who was interested in studying happiness. Interesting. But but the latest studies were, were, were surprising. What and did you find the, out? Yeah, one of the reasons that uh, I found that uh, we are not as happy as we used to be is because of the technology that surrounds us. Uh, for example... Um, the, there was a, a recent study done two years ago by a company by the name of Azeron, and they found that uh, the average American checks his uh, phone 96 times a day, and 66% of the Americans check their phone 160 times a day, and 65% of them sleep with their phones, and 32% would rather... Uh, have their phone than uh, than uh, sex. <laughs> so you could see how we are addicted to the phone, oh, and yeah. the phone controls us. Now I'm I'm a quirky old guy, so what I did is not for everyone, of course. But I went into my doctor's office about seven years ago, and saw uh, eight people sitting there with their heads stuck into their phone, not noticing me. I could have stolen things out of there, and no one would have known it was me. And that was the light bulb that went off. And I went home 
and I gave my cell phone away. Uh, Even though I run two businesses, I hadn't had a cell phone since then. How do you do that without a cell phone today? Hey, there you go. That's what everybody (laughs) asks. But listen, I'm an old timer. I grew up with the telephone on the wall in the kitchen so that if somebody uh, called at night, uh, no one heard the phone. No one answered the phone, you know, and uh, you you would uh, dial the phone. So I use a landline. If someone wants to call me, it goes into my answering service and uh, I would I call them back and I, <clears throat> it works out fine that way. The the other thing that is uh, uh, causing uh, the reduction of our happiness are th- things like Facebook, where we are looking for likes and the studies show that every time someone gets a like on Facebook, there's a little bit of dopamine triggered in the, uh, in the brain that gives them uh, subconsciously a sense of well-being. Yep. Or if they don't get that uh, like, uh, it's just, just the opposite. And what that does is that harms our sense of self-worth, especially uh, when we're young, uh, where our self-worth is, is forming. So that sure. was part of that study about why our, our happiness has, uh, has lessened, so to speak. Uh, but, but there are other reasons as well. The, the speed of, uh, of the, of the, and pressures of the, of the days uh, are that. So that's typical. You know, it's interesting. People don't want to unplug. And I have been amazed over the years how people will be in a restaurant and they're busy texting. They might even be texting each other, but they're not interacting verbally. (laughs) Uh, They are disconnecting with the human race. They have to have the device with them at all times. And like you were talking about with Facebook, not only are they seeking likes and approval, but they're also seeing all the prettiest pictures of everybody's life. People don't post stuff that doesn't look good, uh, portrays them incorrectly. So it's not even realistic. And then people are like, wow, my life sucks. Yeah, it's not real. Uh, mm-hmm. It's all posted that way. It's, uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon. And there's another phenomenon going, going on that we're, we're missing. And, and that is um, Shakespeare had a vocabulary of 54,000 words. The average American has a vocabulary now of about 3,000 words and decreasing because for the first time last year, more people were texting than talking. Yeah. And so we're, we're leaving behind our ability to communicate. We're communicating in emojis. And when the power goes out, what do we do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Uh, but there's an answer to all this. And don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not giving gloom and doom. That's mm-hmm. why I did this study to find out for myself, w- w- what are the solutions to this? And the solutions aren't far away. W- w- can, can I tell you an, an old ancient Sufi story that really describes what happiness is? Sure. There was a, a wise man traveling down a dirt road, and he ran across a beggar walking the other way. And the beggar, noticing the wise men, held up this sack and said to the wise men, in this sack, this putrid sack, this dirty sack, are all my worldly possessions. And the wise men said, well, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. And the, a tear rolled down the uh, beggar's Uh, I, and as soon as that happened, the wise men grabbed the sack out of the hand of the beggar and ran off down the road. And the beggar collapsed on his knees and lamented about losing this, this sack, his worldly possessions. And finally, he rose to his feet and continued to walk down the road. But the wise men had gone ahead of him around the curve and placed the sack in the center of the road. And the 
Baker came up upon the sack, and with that, he was filled with joy and happiness. Oh, my sack! I found my sack again! And the wise men peering behind the bushes said, that's how to make an old man happy. I like happiness that. does not depend on what we have. It depends upon what we feel about what we have. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. So we don't feel correctly. What, what, where are we lacking today? Well, we're lacking in our uh, knowledge of how to achieve happiness. And uh, the, the interesting thing about achieving happiness is you can't be happy by directly looking for happiness. It doesn't work. Uh, and my final chapter in my book has a it's titled Surprise Ending because of that, because how, how to find happiness. Happiness is found indirectly. Um, the way we find happiness um, is through four or five actions that we can take right now we can take. First of all, the power of self-kindness to think about ourselves and to be kinder to ourselves. Um, that, uh, that doesn't happen very often. We're, we're thinking about our problems and our business and not ourselves taking care of ourselves. Uh, the power of happiness uh, requires us to have gratitude for what we have. Uh, by having gratitude, that, all, that includes thanking others uh, for what they've done, just the little things. Uh, and you can practice gratitude by uh, on a daily basis by, to yourself, thanking uh, those people that are important to you in your life, your family and friends. Uh, it, that's extremely important. If you are, <clears throat> if you are, uh, have gratitude, uh, you are uh, become happier. Uh, and the other thing about being happiness is that there's a, the power of purpose. If you find purpose in your life, you find happiness. And, Many people go around in life and not realizing what their purpose is. And, and, and that search for, for, for purpose makes you unhappy. And uh, the next thing that is important about happiness is you're building your friends your, and also your, uh, you're thanking your, your family for what they've given you. Uh, so all of those things are the formula to find happiness. You don't look for happiness in itself. By developing those, you become a, a much happier person. And why do you want to be happy? Not just the emotional feeling, but the title of the book was Happiness Power. And I discovered that uh, those people who are happier uh, have significant powers over those who are not. For example, uh, they are healthier, they have a better immune system, they have lower blood pressure, uh, they have better cardiovascular uh, health, uh, they are more successful in life, they're the ones that get the promotions, they earn more money uh, than those that are not happy, uh, they have more friends uh, and uh, I can go on with that, but I don't want to bore you with, with those details. No, but it makes but, total sense. What I thought we could do is maybe uh, really break this down in the next segment. Um, I think today they're calling it positivity, but I think that's such a big word. People really are kind of getting lost in the details there. And you're making a lot of sense here, Ed. We're talking with Ed McCormick. He's the author of Happiness Power, How to Unleash Your Power and Live a More Joyful Life. We definitely could all use that. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNCRadio.live. I'm Shelby Johnson with Tom Kelly. Stay tuned for more coming up. This info blog on TNCRadio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Six things to consider before starting your career in trucking. 
Truck drivers are often referred to as the backbone of America. They haul roughly 70% of America's freight. Nearly every good consumed in the United States has been shipped by a truck. Right now, the demand for truck drivers is higher than ever. The growing truck driver shortage in America is a topic of concern and has been for the past four years. The United States is in dire need of people to start driving trucks. Are you considering becoming a truck driver, but not quite sure if it's the career path for you? Here are six things potential truck drivers need to know before starting their career in the trucking industry. Know your why. Why do I want to become a truck driver? Is one of the first questions you should ask yourself before starting your career in trucking. Knowing and understanding your why is important so that you make sure that trucking is something you'll enjoy. Nothing is more draining than working in a career field that you're not passionate about and excited about. Truck drivers are already more likely to struggle with mental health problems because of the trucking lifestyle. So to avoid dreading your trucking career, ask yourself, why do I want to be a truck driver? Long work hours. It's obvious that truck drivers spend a majority of their workday in the driver's seat, but many new drivers don't realize how hard it can be sitting for long periods. Drivers spend hours upon hours sitting down. This can result in leg, back, and neck pain. If you're the type of person who cannot handle sitting down for several hours at a time, then truck driving is not for you. Another thing to consider is how long a typical workday is for a truck driver. Drivers are legally allowed to work 14 hours a day, but are limited to 11 hours of driving time. They must take a mandatory 30-minute break by the 8th hour of duty. Following the long workday, drivers must have 10 hours of off-duty time. In a work week, drivers cannot exceed more than 60 hours of work or 70 hours over eight days. Failure to follow these HOS rules can result in being shut down, fines, and lower carrier safety ratings. A new lifestyle. There's not a career quite like trucking. It's nothing like your typical 9-to-5 Monday through Friday job. It's long hours, days, and most times weeks away from home. Truck drivers often experience loneliness, depression, and anxiety. If you're someone who's used to working with many people, then truck driving will be a shock. Drivers will go days or weeks without seeing their loved ones, and it can really take a toll on truckers, especially those who are new. Adjusting to this lifestyle can be challenging at first, but once you do, you can live a rewarding life as a truck driver. Getting seat time. The more experience you have as a truck driver, the better. With more experience, you'll land better truck driving jobs and better pay. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, truck drivers earn an average of over $40,000 a year. Yet, many trucking companies advertise higher rates of pay for experienced drivers. Over time, you can negotiate a higher rate per mile. Your relationships will suffer. It doesn't matter if you're on the road or at home. Make time for family. Make it a priority to talk to someone in your family once a day. It can be tough for truckers, especially long-haul truck drivers, to maintain relationships with their families due to the trucking lifestyle. Keeping in contact with your loved ones will help life on the road be less lonely. Lack of sleep Getting the recommended amount of sleep each night is a rare thing for truckers. Although sleep may be difficult for truckers because of the uncomfortable way of living, it's essential to their well-being and safety. Make it a priority to get good sleep and make a sleep schedule. Set an alarm for a certain time and turn off all electronics and get your much-needed sleep. Not getting enough sleep makes life on the road miserable. Although there may seem like many downsides, truck driving can be a very rewarding and exciting career. As a truck driver, you have freedom on the open road and the chance to see America's most beautiful places. For information on trucking, be sure to check out the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net For the latest in Houston traffic, weather, news, and information, don't miss the Evening Surge weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on tncradio.live This is the Truckers Network radio show on tncradio.live. I'm Shelley Johnson here with Tom Kelly. We're speaking with Ed McCormick, the author of Happiness Power, How to Unleash Your Power and Live a More Joyful Life. 
Ed, while we were on break, you were talking about the differences between optimism versus pessimism and the pursuit of happiness. Did you want to kind of break down the differences between a pessimistic person and a positive one? Yes, I, I think that would be helpful for the audience. Uh, first of all, there are four or five studies that, that show that happiness increases motivation and productivity as well as our our energy so we we want to be happy and uh, an optimistic person tends to be happy without much work uh, happy people have immense power over misfortune uh, they're more positive more focused on, on results uh, what what happens is the half empty glass people and the half full glass people uh, are looking at life two different ways. And the interesting thing about being a pessimistic person, you tend not to be happy if you're pessimistic, but you can be, you can learn to be optimistic. And there are three or four studies that showed uh, how groups of people uh, were trained to go from being uh, looking at the, the the dark side of things to look at look at the bright side of things, and as they did that, they raised their their abilities to to, to be happier, and uh, and well, and, and and one study had uh, people who were showing that their immune systems uh, increased as a result of changing their optimistic rather their pessimistic side to optimistic side. Um, so. It, it's it's an, an interesting uh, interesting studies that actually demonstrate that. So we want to be optimistic. Uh, but we, you know, we, the pessimist's going to say, "I can't be positive; it'll never happen." <laughs> yeah, yes, that's true. And, and 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 let's take it back because we, we, we it tends to be a genetic thing. Some people are born optimists. Some people are, are born pessimists, but it doesn't mean to say they have to stay that way. Uh, the, the environment can, can train them to be more optimistic if they see the benefits of that. That's one of the reasons for my book is to list all the powers that happiness provides, hopefully giving you the incentive to want to be happier and to learn to move from a pessimistic attitude to a more optimistic attitude. I've heard that pessimistic people, though, actually get um, some sort of reward. Uh, it becomes well, addictive that when they're negative. Um, they like to vent and, and that sort of thing. They get some sort of a kick out of it, which is, is uh, going the wrong direction, certainly. Yes, yeah, Shelley, that's true. They're, they're, that's true. They, they, they have shown that uh, pessimistic some not, not all of course but some groups of pessimistic people are pessimistic because they get the sympathy for being pessimistic and and, and they feed on that and <clears throat> that's self-fulfilling and they continue to be more pessimistic the only way to to bring them out of that is to have them realize that there are benefits to being more optimistic that are much stronger and much more beneficial than getting the sympathy for being a pessimist. And, and it doesn't work for everyone, of course, but a, again, it's worth the try. If you want to be a, a more healthier life, a more successful life, and, and of course, a happier life. I know when I was growing up, my mom liked the character Pollyanna, and she taught me the glad game, you know, be happy and be positive. And I'm sure that a lot of it's environment. Um, we, we grow up and we become who we are based on what we've heard. Uh, how do people overcome that? How do they grasp the optimism and the ability to be happy? Well, they have to have the desire to do it, first of all. It, it doesn't happen by, by magic or, 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 or just by reading a, a book such as mine. If you if you read the book, you, you'll see reasons to want to be, and maybe they are compelling and to some, and maybe they're not so compelling to others. And if they are compelling, then there are a number of things that you can do to practice to start to 
open up your eyes and and look. We know that uh, in life, uh, people look at the same thing and come to different conclusions. But they, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, we have progressives and we have conservative people. And if you give them the same set of facts, each one will come to different conclusions for that. It's the same thing with optimists and pessimists. Give them the same facts, such as the old saw of the glass that is half filled with water. Yep. The, uh, we know that the pessimists would naturally say that it's half filled and the optimists Excuse me, it's half empty, and the optimist would say it's half full. Right. Uh, but if they see that by becoming optimistic, they will be healthier people, uh, they will be more successful in their in their business, in their lives, uh, in their social circles. Uh, to many people, that's compelling enough to want to practice, and we start practice through. Just quick meditations, uh, 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 once or twice a day, five minutes, giving yourself uh, a talks to yourself about looking at the positive side. Um, and, and, and it sounds silly, but by talking that way over a period of time, it works and it starts to open up your thoughts to looking at the same item that we just talked about in a more positive way. So you know, how, there's no pill that you can take. It just has to be practiced. It has to be it, wanted. It has to be desired. Yeah. And, and I think that's part of the problem, too. People like to take their happy pills. <laughs> you know, people drink, they do this, they do that. So they can feel better. But that's so counterproductive. Well, one of the things that I personally uh, dislike is I dislike a control. So that's why I, I dropped the phone. I don't like control. I don't mm -hmm. drink because uh, I, and it's just my personal. I don't say that no one should drink. It's just personally, uh, I don't touch alcohol because I'm happier not do, not doing that and feeling that I'm in control. Now that's self discipline, and as you practice self discipline, coming out of uh, your uh, funk of uh, being a pessimist, slowly you'll gain acceptance just like when i gave up my cell phone it took me a year and a half to feel that i was free from that cell phone it controlled me did you feel like you weren't a whole person without it because i think that a lot of people would feel that way oh yes oh oh, oh, oh yeah it's part of you when, when you're doing it. it that's what was so scary for me that it was uh, i said I, it, it was more than just the cell phone it was my god it, it's an insidious method to control. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, now I, I'm really in, in, in the vast minor, uh, minority of this. Uh, but because of my circumstances, I could do that. Because of my strong desire, I could do that. But if we're talking about a, a, a truck driver going cross country, he needs that cell phone to communicate. And I, I, I understand that. Sure. Uh, but... Uh, <clears throat> when I just get into my car going from uh, site to site, I, I don't need that. My wife would always say to me, because my wife has a cell phone, well, what happens if your car breaks down? Well, I said, well, everybody has a cell phone. I'll just ask if I can borrow it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you can well you know true. i i yeah. actually did that uh years ago when the, when they were, were uh car phones um i didn't I have one of those a car phone, phone. And I, I was uh, I was uh, running late uh, because of a, an accident that was ahead of me, and there were a bunch of cars that were pulled over uh, on the off ramp uh, where I needed to go. And I'm like, I gotta make a call, so I go walking down the ramp, and I see a car with an antenna, and I've got some money in my hand. I knock on the guy's window, and I said, "Could I please? I, I'll pay you a buck. Can I use your phone real quick? It's a local call." And he just hands me the phone, like, "Huh." <laughs> Yeah, well, of course, that's me. But uh, yeah, uh, most people do have cell phones. And you don't have to have them. Uh, pay phones are impossible to find today. But we are so addicted to gadgets. And it's not a good thing. No, it's not a good thing. And I don't think we figured that out yet e either. The, the, the vast majority of us sure. as to really what we want. 
Well, look, life evolves. The, 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 the thing about life is it's where it changes. So uh, changes for the good, it changes for the, for the bad, but it does change. That's right. And yeah. we know that. Um, but, part, but part of the studies in, in, in this book uh, came from the, the, the big universities, such as Harvard and, and Princeton and uh, University of uh, uh, California, all about uh, the importance of uh, looking indirectly for happiness. Uh, that, uh, that, as I to repeat myself, if you're if you're just in it to look for happiness, you're not going to find it, because what will happen is that you'll be disappointed, and that disappointment will lower your uh, your levels of uh, of happiness. And it's a circle, a vicious circle. Oh, sure it is. But if you are looking, <clears throat> years ago, I, I, I volunteered for the Big Brothers organization. And I'd been there for like 35 years, the Big Brothers organization. Uh, my first big uh, little brother is uh, 52 years old. So not so little any longer. And, and we're still friends. What I found by doing that is I got more good feelings out of that volunteering than uh, uh, than anything else I had done in a long time. It just made me feel good about myself, about the fact that I'm giving. Uh, I, I was happier. I, I felt better. And uh, sure, there were disappointments along the way, but volunteering is a a, a wonderful ingredient to help uh, uh, build your happiness. Sure it is. Well, Volunteer you're for the ambulance score or the or, or in, in some places in, in rural America, including my home, you can volunteer for the for the fire department as such. Or you can volunteer in school or uh, go down to the hospital and volunteer at the hospital or uh, the VA are looking mm -hmm. for volunteers. Uh, just the fact that you're volunteering does so many things, including opening up your circle of friends. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet before. Sure. Uh, and it, it, it's so rewarding. And you're giving. That and is part of the happiness formula. Sure, you're giving and you've got a sense of purpose, too. We're talking exactly. with Ed, Ed McCormick, the author of Happiness, Power, How to Unleash Your Power and Live a More Joyful Life here on TNC Radio. Live. Stay tuned for more. He's got some great insight here. On May 20th, NOAA issued its 2021 Seasonal Hurricane Outlook for the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific Basins. For the Atlantic, an active hurricane season is predicted. Here at NOAA, we're predicting a 60% chance that the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season will be above normal. There is a 30% chance of the season being near normal and a 10% chance of it being below normal. Several climate factors that are conducive to increased hurricane activity, including the ongoing high activity era that has been in place since 1995, are reflected in this year's outlook. We're now experiencing ENSO-neutral conditions with the possibility of a return to La Nina later in the hurricane season. In addition, warmer-than-average sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean Sea, reduced vertical wind shear, weaker tropical Atlantic trade winds, and an enhanced West African monsoon all contribute to the outlook for this season's above-normal activity. Each year, it is important to be prepared for the hurricane season ahead, and 2021 is no different. As we know, it takes just one storm to impact a community and cause significant damage from high winds, storm surge, and flooding. NOAA works closely with our partners to help emergency managers and communities make targeted decisions to support public safety. Millions of people in the U.S. live in areas that could be impacted by a hurricane, and only a fraction of those live along the immediate coast. Now is the time to get prepared. Visit the National Hurricane Center's website at hurricanes.gov throughout the season to stay on top of any watches and warnings. Be sure to visit FEMA's website, ready.gov, for additional hurricane preparedness tips. Hurricane preparation starts at home. Start today, and together we can build a more weather-ready nation. This is a very special shout-out to all our truckers. From Starcom Racing's Quinn Hoff. On TNC Radio Live. I uh, just wanted to give a special shout out to all the truckers out there listening. You know, uh, there's a lot of storms out there. Just stay safe. 
and uh, I appreciate everything they do for our country. Like I said, that I don't know if you guys heard earlier, without trucks, America stops moving. And I know that well myself, coming from a family trucking business. And uh, you know, obviously, everyone needs truck drivers. So if you need uh, you need a truck driving position, be sure to check out Half Transfer. And uh, I appreciate you. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly. We're talking with Ed McCormick, who's the author of Happiness Power, How to Unleash Your Power and Live a More Joyful Life. Ed, um, we can't be happy all the time, but you said that's okay. Yes, uh, yes. <clears throat> you can develop a level of happiness, but you can't keep that level. And happiness, uh, like all emotions, uh, fluctuate. Uh, what we try to do is to develop our, our system of indirect uh, happiness. That is the system of our self-kindness, our looking for the power of purpose, gratitude, and, uh, and so on. And keeping that up, volunteering and, and giving, uh, and by, by doing so, you're, you're not going to keep, because there are days that things just don't go your way, and we know that. Uh, by developing your feelings of, of optimism, you know, oft times you can uh, shrug off those things that are not going your way. But uh, I, I want to make certain that the audience knows that I'm not projecting that happiness is, happiness is forever. What I'm projecting is that you can reach happiness more frequently by doing these things than than not doing these things. And that's that's important in life. If you're generally more happy than you are unhappy, you've succeeded. Uh, <clears throat> and really, that's what I'm, I'm getting at. So if you're going to practice these indirect ways of being happy, you're going to be successful, but not every day. And it doesn't matter as long as you know that you are doing these things. Uh, Part, part of the exercise in the book is to uh, do things for yourself. For example, when I say the power of gratitude, it's you silently thank others uh, as you're practicing your gratitude. And you think about all those people that have helped you uh, on a daily basis, just for a short period of time. It, it, it really boosts the oxycotton level in your in your brain by saying, "Oh, I'm thinking about those people." And these little tricks along the way really are helpful. And, and you remember that the the story I told you of the uh, Sufi beggar that that walked down. Uh, one moment he was unhappy, and the next moment he was happy. And what happened? It's just his mental attitude changed, and that's really about how. We're going to find happiness by changing your mental attitude. That's how uh, pessimistic people will find optimism, by changing their mental attitude. Right. So do you think social media, um, I think in many ways it's been very detrimental. Doesn't that kind of run counter to people being able to find intrinsic happiness because they're Yes, and uh, uh, another couple of studies and very recently have showed that uh, people are now shedding uh, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and so social media is, uh, is not important to those people any longer. And it shouldn't be because it, it does, does control them. It, it, again, it controls, it controls our self-worth or our feelings of self-worth. Yeah. And we have to be feel that we are important ourselves and that we are should not be vulnerable to criticism. If we know that ourselves are good and kind and thoughtful, other people's criticism shouldn't count. And that is for uh, in, in the flesh or on social media. And social media is Look for the young people. There, there are people who've committed suicide for the oh. criticism they've gotten on on social media. Oh yeah, there, there, there are people out there that are just detrimental. Pariahs. That is, yeah, it's it's terrible. There are people who are saying things on social media platforms that they would never say face to face. It has not brought out the best in human beings at all. 
Yeah. Well, that that really is another issue for for a, another another study about uh, the the uh, lack of consideration mm-hmm. for the human being uh, that it seems to be developing in in, in this country. Uh, but I, I'm not talking about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still an important issue to, oh, sure. to to investigate. So, do you recommend maybe people unplug? Yes. Uh, okay. I, uh, you know, I, I've uh, I, I rarely use social media. I do used to, but mm-hmm. I, I stopped doing that. I I practice what I preach, uh, and uh, it feels good. You know, I oh yes, I sure I use email and I uh, I do uh, uh, community communicate that way. Uh, I don't tweet. I don't have a tweet account. And uh, you will find if you're able to do that, and you're able to speak directly to somebody or on the telephone, I'm not saying that you throw away your telephone, but use the telephone to communicate voice rather than text, you'll be much happier. And people will think much uh, better about you. You know, it's kind of funny, depending on the generation, if you actually call them and talk to them, uh, they seem really surprised and, and a little put off because they're not used to talking. <laughs> yeah, that is right. That, that's, that is right. That's how far we've come. It's almost insulting to talk to somebody. Oh, text me. No, I don't have time to talk. But what you were saying when we first started chatting here, uh, 5,000 words is the average uh, vocabulary of people no that's three thousand really, is it three thousand it's yeah. even lower yeah. that's scary <laughs> it is scary but it's decreasing too yeah so, so i mean our cognitive functioning is going down with the electronic that's gadgets. it that's it our, our our thinking where we're is diminishing that's the other reason we can say well look uh the the chinese are, are superior they 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 use uh uh it, it, graphics in their writing which uh, is uh, so complicated how do i know that because my wife is chinese and mm-hmm. it's an amazing to see her thought process go through that uh we don't want uh for english to go away at least i don't want it to go away uh and if you think about as i said earlier shakespeare had a vocabulary of 54,000 words. Now, of course, he was the exception, but in old England, they had huge vocabularies compared to what we have now. Sure. Yeah. Uh, And maybe they were happier, do you think? I think. No Mm -hmm. social media. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) And they had to find their sense of purpose. And they had, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Most of the sense of purpose in those days were hard work. Well, you, you either yeah. did that or you didn't survive, basically. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, I was raised with be not simply good, but good for something. Yes. Well, one last <laughs> thing about yeah. about that, uh, about happy. So I, I did say that the power of gratefulness is very important. The opposite of gratefulness is entitled. Uh, yes. And there are plenty of people out there today who um, yeah. have a self-entitlement. Exactly. And so you see so many entitled people, especially younger folks who've mm-hmm. been uh, given so many things, um, that it's hard for them to be grateful. And that's counterproductive. And I don't think they're ever happy because they're always searching for something, aren't they? Yeah, they, uh, that's right. That's That's what the studies have shown. So... There's a lot to re- be to repair, but we can repair it within ourselves. And, well, that's where we start. Right. And that's where we start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you can't tem- change other people. Right. The temptation is, I'm going to go fix everybody else, but you really can't. Mm-mm. And if people exactly, and if people don't buy your book, they won't be able to, you know, be able to to do this either. So, Shelley, I guess when we come back, we need to talk about how to get the book, huh? I think that sounds terrific. We're talking with Ed McCormick, the author of Happiness Power, How to Unleash Your Power and Live a More Joyful Life. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show on TNCradio.live. Stay tuned for more, and you're going to find out where you can get this book 
uh, there are a lot of helpful hints here that uh, I think will make you very happy. You're listening to TNCRadio.live. Finding a safe place to park your rig at night can be a challenge on the road. The Truckers Network, a membership resource site for trucking companies, company drivers, and owner-operators, proudly partners with Truck Park to offer safe and secure overnight truck parking to all Truckers Network members. Truck Park is the digital truck parking leader and America's fastest-growing truck parking service. The Truckers Network exists to link truck drivers with the best quality trucking products and services the industry has to offer. Finding safe overnight parking is crucial for truck drivers, and many drivers struggle with finding available parking spots. The limited parking availability causes drivers to lose sleep, which poses a safety risk to others on the road. Safe parking is valuable for drivers and the cargo they're transporting. With this partnership, Truckers Network members will have access to a discount code and be able to reserve parking spots in real time along their truck route at a reduced price. Truck Park gives drivers access to parking locations across most of the United States. Simply enter the city and state to view available parking spaces nearest to pickup or delivery point, then pay to reserve. Parking rates vary at each location, with some rates as low as $10. Truck Park is a values-based company that empowers truck drivers while providing a safe and unmatched experience. The company offers a quick way to find and reserve parking spots throughout the U.S., Truck drivers have access to Truck Park's free mobile app to easily begin reserving parking spots based on their truck route. About the Truckers Network. The Truckers Network exists to link truckers and trucking businesses throughout the United States. The company's mission is to make the life of a truck driver easier by connecting drivers to the highest quality trucking products and services to keep their trucks on the road. Want to advertise on TNCRadio.live? Take advantage of great discounts for 2021. Check out the sponsors page at TNCRadio.live or send email to info at TNCRadio.live. This is the Truckers Network radio show on TNCRadio.live. I'm Shelly Johnson here with Tom Kelly. We're talking with Ed McCormick, the author of Happiness Power, How to Unleash Your Power and Live a More Joyful Life. Ed, if you wouldn't mind, could you summarize how people can gain happiness in their life? Yeah, um, uh, I, of course. Before I do, I want to just... Join the meeting. If, uh, I want to mention that there is an Australian uh, Austrian neurologist uh, by the name of Viktor Frankl, and, and he explained that those that have a why to live by can almost bear any how. And Interesting. that's really a formula for happiness. And that's that's the power of purpose. So say, say it one more time, please. Frankel said, and he's a very famous neurologist, and the most psychiatrists and mm-hmm. neurologists uh, in, around the world know him. But he said that those that have a why to live by, why w h y why to live by, can almost bear. Anyhow, mm-hmm. and that came from uh, uh, the, uh, the the prison camps in Germany from the prisoners who survived. They had a why to live by, and they bear and they they bear the suffering of, of that prison. And so, in camps. other words, they had a reason to be. They had right? a reason. Yep, and that's really part of why. I mentioned that you can change your outlook from being pessimistic to being optimistic by finding the why to live by. And in the end, looking for happiness, you can't find happiness directly. You have to find it by doing indirect things, such as thanking people uh, and thanking And you can do it to yourself. You don't have to say to the people, you want to thank uh, others for what you've gotten. Um, Harvard Medical School uh, defines it as a thankful appreciation for what was received and acknowledging the goodness of one's own life. Uh, 
there that gratitude is very important for being happy. And sure it is. you can thank yourself silently uh, and do it daily. Uh, the uh, power of self-kindness is meaning you want to build your self-esteem and uh, you want to build your self-confidence. Uh, self-confidence and self-esteem are related to a successful life. Uh, you want to be more assertive, not worry about what others think, and stop comparing yourself to others. That's extremely important. Amen. We all do that. Uh, and Those just, are words to live by. Yeah, where, exactly. Where, Ed, and, do people find your book? You've got some great insight uh, here. It's available on Amazon.com, both in English and in Spanish. Uh, it's also uh, available as an audio book, and it's available at, uh, at Barnes & Noble. Excellent. And also on my website, which is uh, robertgillejr.com. Excellent. And you also have a happiness mug. If people write to mug at tncradio.live, they can get a mug that will remind them to be happy. I like that. Thank you so much, Ed, for being on the show. I think you've got some great insight here, and it's definitely people really, really need that today. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show on tncradio.live. Stay tuned for more coming up. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast. For more information regarding our podcast, reuse, copyrights, etc., please visit our website, www.tncradio.live.